All right, welcome back, students. Um, so what we're going to do today uh, is going to um, give you a little lesson on how to use a coping saw, okay? Um, there is potential for cutting yourself um, as it is a saw, okay? You've got sharp blade, okay? And if you had a slip um, while making a cut, you could very easily uh, cut your finger pretty good. So we're going to go over just a couple items with the coping saw and how to use it safely. Um, so first of all, let's go over the components of a coping saw. You've got a handle, okay, you've got a frame, get the blade, okay, and then you've got these siding pins, okay. Um, you can see that I've kind of angled the siding pins so you can just kind of see what they are. Um, but that controls the angle of the blade in which you're going to be cutting. Um, the handle can loosen for the sake of replacing a blade and installing a new one. Okay, When you're doing that, you loosen the handle, but you've got to hold the siding pin steady so that the blade doesn't twist, okay? Now, all the coping saws that I'm gonna issue you are already set up um, to where you can grab it out of your box and go ahead and start making some cuts. Uh, in the event something kinda goes south on you, these are just a couple steps to help you um, fix, fix your saw if, if the blade were to come misaligned. So, I always like to have the blade in a vertical position, which means these siding pins should be in a vertical position. Okay, you can't adjust these unless you loosen up the handle. Okay, loosening that handle takes some of the tension out of this blade and allows you to, to move it around. Okay, so the, the handle was loosened. I move my siding pins back to vertical or the 12 o'clock position, okay? Okay, now before I do anything else, I'm gonna tighten my handle, keeping in mind that I've gotta hold this siding pin in place. Okay, so tighten it up pretty good. It'll, it'll stop once you've gone too far. Um, so you're good to use your coping saw, okay? Um, the orientation of the teeth on the blade they're, they're pointing towards you or towards the handle. And so what that means is the cutting action is going to occur when you drag the saw backwards, okay? You can certainly drag it forward to get your uh, cut started, but most of the sawing action is going to occur on your, uh, your backstroke. Um, so that's the coping saw. Um, couple safety reminders for you is positioning and where you're going to grip your project while you're making a cut, okay? And so you can see the shape of my design and I've got quite a few cuts to make. Um, and how I, how I hold the, the wood block here while I'm making a cut is important for your safety. Now, if I wanted to make this cut right in here, it wouldn't be the best idea to position my hand like this to make that cut or to start it simply because my hand is too close to the blade, okay? And if something were to slip, okay, I have the potential of cutting my thumb or, or uh, pointer finger. So keep in mind where you're, where you're positioning your secondary hand uh, while you're going to make a cut. So there's a couple options. If I wanted to make this cut, I can simply turn my block around, hold my hand above where I'm cutting, okay, and proceed with that cut. Okay, so um, oftentimes it takes a little bit of uh, forward thinking to, to think about how you're going to proceed with a cut and what's safest. Um, so coping saw safety, we're we're complete with that lesson. Now let's talk about how to approach um, cutting your, your wood blocks and your designs out, okay? 
there's a method that um, has been used quite frequently uh, when using a coping saw or other various saws. And when you're cutting a big, long uh, portion off your wood block, oftentimes it's best to use what's called a relief cut. Okay, so that helps you um, in your efforts of, of making a cut or a series of different cuts, uh, specifically ones where you're going to make a transition along a curve or a contour. So for me, um, what I'm going to do is put in a couple relief cuts. Okay, so I'm going to want a relief cut somewhere in here. And let's see. Maybe one somewhere in here, and let's do one at that, change of direction, one in here, and then let's do one down the middle, okay? A um, couple, couple uh, things to mention. Uh, this little cut right here, you could certainly do it with a coping saw but you could also sand that little portion off with your sandpaper. So um, anyhow, something to think about. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just demonstrate a couple cuts for you. Okay, um, try to observe my hand placement and then my technique with the coping saw. Okay, so what I'm going to do is make those relief cuts first before I start making uh, my outline cuts, okay? Okay, so sometimes when you're trying to get your cut started, okay, you're gonna have a hard time dragging it back to get it started just because of the orientation of the teeth. Remember, they're facing towards you or towards the handle. So sometimes if you start your cut by just sliding it forward to create a groove, okay, that's going to be most helpful. Once you've gotten a, a groove established, okay, you can go ahead and start slowly making your cut. Keeping in mind that you just take your time and let the saw do all the work, okay? Okay. Okay, so not, not so bad, huh? Um, you'll go ahead and do most of your relief cuts first, and then you can go ahead and start with the cutting out of your designs, okay? So I'm going to start with this back edge here. I'm going to go ahead and start my cut from, from the top and work my way down, okay? So you kind of got to line up your saw with where you think it's going to be best. Okay, so somewhere in here. Okay, and you'll find that you'll need to move that saw around to achieve the desired results, okay? So I'm cutting this straight down, okay? Getting the cut started is oftentimes a little bit of a struggle, but once you get it going, you'll find that it's not so bad. Again, just taking your time with this. There's no hurry. Try to... Um, cut on the outside of your lines, you can always come back and use your sandpaper to sand down uh, to those precise uh, measurements, okay? Not the best, but not the worst. Um, so that's one cut. Probably going to take you 
oh, a good half hour, depending on your design, to, to make you know, all these cuts and do a good job at it. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the lesson. Be safe. See you on the next one.